Shalom unto the nation of Israel. First and foremost, before I get into my lesson, I want to start off giving all praises unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka Chodash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of great millstone that teach and rule well today. And salutation also to the fellow laborers that's in the ministry and the believers that scatter worldwide that's in the faith and exalt in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Chodash, and all truth and sincerity day in and day out. Shalom. Once again, I'm the brother Shaquat Gabar from the Great Millstone, South Carolina Midlands Branch, coming at you with another lesson. And as before I get into my lesson, this message or these videos goes out to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which we are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible, and also to the Israelite foreigners that are scattered amongst the heathen nations and that may take on a typical look or physical look of another nation but if your bloodline goes back to Negro, Latino, or Native American descent by the seed of your father, you are considered an Israelite as well. Shalom. Uh, so, Bishop, I'm just going to get into a quick lesson touching on the parable that's written in Luke chapter 16, okay, starting at verse 19, about the rich man and Lazarus, okay? And this is a, a dark sand that Yahweh Shah went into. Uh, once again, a parable, okay, when it comes to the rich man in this chapter, at this time represent Esau Edom, the so-called white race, mainly stunt with the elites on down, okay, because we're in the time of Esau Edom rulership, okay? And as he in rulership, if you don't know by now, and if it ain't hard to tell, they have the fatness or the, all the riches of the earth, man, okay? And we know how they conquered, okay, uh, uh, the earth, okay, as they're in rulership, okay, which, you know, mainly by the sword, which was the blessing that was given unto them by Isaac, man, okay? And I'm going to get into that. So we're in the rulership of Esau Edom kingdom, okay? And, uh, and Lazarus, okay, in this chapter represent the nation of Israel, Okay, being at a low state, which we in that time now, when it comes to the Negro, Latinos, Native Americans, so-called, okay, descent. So primary here in America, okay, we are in captivity, and we know about the history of the enslavement of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans up on the Esau Edom, man. Okay, so Lazarus represent the nation of Israel, okay, as we're on the bottom, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get into this parable, and I'm going to get a couple of precepts to go along with it. And I pray that the lesson be edifying. And uh, this is Luke chapter 16, verse 19. And there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fair sumptuous, 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 every day. Okay, and that's going into the, uh, the wealth and the riches of Esau, you know, man. Okay, once again, Esau Edom is the rich man in this parable, okay? And the purple and fine linen represent kingdom, okay, or, 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 or kingdom mentality or rulership, okay? And that's Esau Edom. And it says, they and fare sum, sumptuously every day, okay? And let's look at that word uh, sumptuously, okay? As I had it here in the blue letter. And I'm going to go to it. Okay, as you can see, sumptuously. Okay, so like if I, excuse me if I pronounce the word wrong. I don't know, I ain't got the best speech. But that's all right. Okay, let's listen to it in the Greek. Strong's G, 2988, La Prose, La Prose, La Prose, La Prose, okay, and you can see the strong definition, 
and it says an adverb from brilliantly, figurativity, luxuriously, sumptuously. Okay, so living wealthy, man. And all these Edomites living wealthy. Okay, mainly these elites. Even down to certain average Edomites that's ruling here in America, man. Okay. Don't they have the uh to a certain extent these Edomites? Okay, it was known to have, you know, the the fabulous when it comes to lifestyle, uh, uh when it comes to the bestest houses, homes, material things, okay, as jewelry, okay, money, okay. You know, being the head of the curve to say to speak, man. Okay, when it comes to this kingdom. Let me go to a, some more definition. And it says, spindly, magnific, 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 uh, magnificently, and sumptuously living. Okay, so they're living it up, man. Because this is the time of their rulership, man. Okay. So let's go back to Luke chapter 16, verse 19. And it says, there was a certain man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair substitutely every day. Okay. And still to this day, Esau Edom is um, in power ship. Okay. And enjoying their riches. Okay. Like I say, mainly these elites, man. Okay. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts, Gettys, Arpaheimers. Okay. These one percent, okay, all these central bankers, man, and those that's in lead with them, okay, that rule over all things, man, as we in their rulership. And now we're at the point that they want to establish their NWO, okay, and that they want to bring total control over all nations, as we're coming to the time of the prophecy, of Revelation chapter thirteen, verse sixteen, the RFID micro, okay, being the MOTB. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, man. And this place is moving towards a cashless society. Okay, because now we understand that the debt, the, the dollar, okay, the physical dollar is is useless. It's nothing but debt. And it was all and it all was a, a scheme, a fraud, okay, that made the, the bankers rich. And they use America as their key component. To push that dollar, man. Okay, to do trades in that currency with other nations. Now all, all nations are in debt, especially America, to these elites. And that's why now you're seeing the talk of inflation and the coming crash of the dollar. Okay? And now that now they're ready to move forward with a digital currency to replace the dollar by the way of the C B D C. Okay, central bank digital currency, man. Which is going to pinpoint to Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, the MOTB, the micro or the electronic device. Okay? So here they don't gain all the riches of the world by the conquering of their sword. And that's not enough. Okay? To the point they want everybody C H I P P E D. And that's where we're heading to. But let me continue on. <clears throat> and it says, <clears throat> Verse 20, Luke chapter 16, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was led at his gate full of sores. And that's the nation of Israel. Okay, the nation of Israel, okay, of Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, descent. Okay, here in America alone, okay, is in the state of, as a beggar. Okay, because we know that we're here in captivity, up under the rule of Esau, Edom. Subject to payments, okay. Subject to these jobs, employment, okay. The labor that Negro, Latino, Native Americans have to, you know, go about doing to so-called have a life, okay. To able to to, to operate in this so-called system by everything being monetary gain, okay. And when it comes to the nation of Israel. Even though we the ones that work the hardest, we still on the bottom. Okay? Even these sellouts of these celebrities of our people.
that our people look up to be, you know, public figures due to their, you know, so-called celebrity status and their wealth. Okay, which a lot of these entertainers of our people, okay, really don't really have money. And everything they get, they get from their handlers, okay, of the uh, less illuminated ones, okay, of the elites, okay, that they sell out to, okay? And eventually when they crash the system and they introduce that new digital system, okay, even the rich amongst our people going to have to take that MOTB. As it says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, that he's going to cause all, okay, all nations, rich and poor, okay, including the sellouts or the wicked celebrities amongst our people, man, or uh, individuals here in America of our people that got it so-called good, that are living comfortably so in, in a security, okay, thinking that they have real wealth, real riches. Okay, but at the end of the day, where did they get their money from? Their income from? From the system. Okay? But down to the average Negro, Latino, Native American, okay, is living check by check, man. Okay? Like, like, as our people like to say, okay, getting by on a wing and a prayer. Okay? So that show you that we're on the bottom. And it says... And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which laid at his gate full of sores. And the sores represent the, the curses, man. Okay? Because like I say, Esau Edom has um, uh, gained rulership over us. And that's due to the will of the Lord. And due to our disobedience against the ways of Yahweh Bashim and that the Lord put judgment upon us by allowing Esau Eden to rule over us, which is prophecy's sake. But now we're living out the prophecy that we're on the bottom, man, up under the rule of Esau Edom. And the swords represent um, the curses. Let me get this real quick. That's Isaiah chapter 1, verse... Um, This is Isaiah chapter 1, verse um, 5. And it says, Why should you be stricken anymore? Yea, ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart fainteth. And that's the nation of Israel. Okay, from the head. Okay, um, going into Judah. The so-called Negroes, the head tribe. Okay, all the way down to Issachar, the so-called Mexicans. Okay, once again, a Negro, Latino, Native American descent here in America as where mainly our main captivity is that we're under these curses, man, and being ruled by Esau Edom. So this means that we had a low state, okay? And it says, and the whole heart fainteth, and the sole of the, of the feet, even the head, there is no soundness in it. And you see the condition of our people when it comes to um, at this moment, the, the, the two thirds, man. Okay, the all into so you know these so called philosophies, these different uh, false doctrines, the different sets of religions, going after the ways of America. Okay, being contrary to the ways of the law, statute, commandments, or Yah, or Yahweh Bashmi was shy. Okay, not acknowledging their heritage. Okay, so you see the condition of our people. As we're experiencing these curses, man. Okay? But the Lord is waking up a remnant, which we're considered the 144,000 and the one third that's the elect that's being called and eventually being chosen to come back and acknowledge Yahweh Bashim Shai and the true heritage of being Hebrew Israelites and, and knowing the will of the Lord. Okay? But as a whole, at this time, we're in a low, low state. And this was going into. And it said, From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and petrifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mortified with ointment. Okay? And so that's the point. Okay, as a whole, the nation of Israel is in a low state. 
experience of these curses, man. Okay, let me get Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 45. And it says, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Okay, so that's the point. Okay, the Lord put these curses upon us to overtake us, man. And you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 16, all the way throughout the 68, okay, you get more of a clear understanding who these curses fit today, okay, as the nation of Israel. Who will be the nation of Israel, okay, by these cursing, describing who they are, which is no doubt Negroes, Latino, Native Americans, okay, which those are false identities or bywords, okay, which our oppressor Esau Edom put upon us, okay, which are curses, man, that we discontinue from our inheritance. So that's it on that. And right now, like I say, we in Esau Edom rulership. Okay, it says that how the rich man what? Um Let me get back to it. You know how it says that there was a certain rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day. Okay, like I say, how Esau Edom gained rulership? By the blessing of the sword. Okay, matter of fact, let me go to that real quick. So we're on the bottom right now. Going into Genesis. And we know about the Genesis between the account with uh, Esau and Jacob. Okay. That when Jacob, you know, received the blessing as he disguised himself as Esau. Because, you know, it's in the law. Or uh, known that when it comes to the firstborn, they received the inheritance. Okay. Okay. And Esau, Edom was, well, Esau was the firstborn. But the Lord rejected him. And we know that Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for red pottage. Okay? Which, like I say, the birthright gives the right to the firstborn, the elderly, okay, to receive the first blessing. But in this case, Jacob received a blessing due to Esau Edom selling his birthright. And it's all through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim was shy. And we know the account that Jacob dis dis disguised himself with the help of his mother, Rebecca. Okay, and he got the blessing. And you know, you know that uh, Isaac was up in age, and he blessed Jacob. Thought thought that he was Esau. Okay, then after that, Esau. I mean, Jacob had fled after receiving the blessing. Then Esau came to receive the blessing. Then they found out that he was supplanted. Okay, by Jacob, which the word Jacob means supplant, supplanter. But he received his blessing, okay, from Isaac. And we're going to go to it. Um, Genesis chapter 39, I mean, Genesis chapter 27, verse 39. Okay, and it says, And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. So this was the blessing that Isaac gave unto Esau, man. Okay, and, that, and that's what they have right now. And they had, not only in this lifetime, here through this uh, system, America, okay, the EU, and have and now have they got success or uh, rulership over the whole earth. But even the time, okay, from the Roman Empire, okay, and also the, Gre the, the Greek Empire, or the Greco-Roman Empire, okay, when they so-called civilization, Okay, or uh, 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 so-called whites being in rulership. Then one point of time they fell during the the um the dark ages, and they came back into power through the Borgia family, the Renaissance, the rebirth, and from that time to now, have they have have, have success of rulership, man. They have the fatness of the earth, man, and the dew with heaven. Represent their blessing. Okay, their riches. Verse 40. And by thy sword shall I live and shall serve thy brother 
Okay, and that's how Esau Edom gained success throughout all his kingdoms. By the way of the blessing of the sword, man. Okay. And in this time, as always, his military might. Esau always known to have um, strong militaries from the time of the Greeks, the Romans, until now. Look at the American military. Look at um, NATO, the EU military. Okay. That's ruling. And even Russia, even Russia, they're Edomites, but they have a, 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 a vast military. Okay. Even though they're not part of NATO or the EU. Even though they're not allies with America, but they're Edomites. And right now we're at the time of the Lord bringing division amongst the Edomites, man. Especially when it comes to these superpowers. Because Russia going to be a key point in this third world war to come against America and to shoot their thermonuclear missiles on this place. Okay. At the peak of the third world war and the coming of Yahweh Shai, who the world called Christ, second coming. Okay. And it says, um, verse 40, Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. So this is the point that the Edomites is in rulership today. And they gain rulership mainly by they swore, and not only just that, by their lies, man. Okay, by deceiving us. Whitewashing, setting up these uh, false religions, which the word religion means worship. Okay, they got majority of the, the, the world stare into these false doctrines, these going after these false gods, the idols, the customs of the heathens. Okay? Esau, Edom had done that, man. Who the one put their face up as our Lord, man, being a so-called white man? The Edomites. Okay? And through that image alone, had to see majority of the world, man. Because all nations at one point in time believe in the image, okay, who they were called Christ being a so-called white man, okay? So that proved right there that Esau Edom is in rulership. Hey, the, the American dollar bill. Okay, I'll talk about how um, the dollar bill was a, a once was once a stronghold in the world economy, but now that is dwelling or, or falling, okay? But who face is on the dollar bill? The Edomites, okay? Cause that's the number. Well, they're still the number one currency until they replace it with that MOTB worldwide, man. Genesis chapter twenty-seven, verse forty. And by thy swords shall thy live and shall serve thy brother. Cause eventually the blessing is that Esau Edom gonna serve us, and that's in the kingdom. Okay, and we're gonna get back into that parable. And it says, "It shall come to pass when thou shalt have the million, that thou shalt break." his yoke from off thy neck. Cause one point of time we rule over Esau Edom during the time of uh, Cain, David, uh, Solomon. Okay. Various rulerships that we've been in power and we rule over Esau Edom. Hey, the dark ages, mainly when the Southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay. The Negroes at that time, so-called when they ruled Europe and pushed Esau Edom up into the, the mountains. And that's why now they go by one of the terms Caucasian, which the word Caucasian means cave dweller. Okay, so it came upon a time, okay, that we rule over Esau Edom. And throughout various times, you know, they rule over us, just as today. Okay, that now they came back into power since the uh, the Renaissance, man, as I explained. Okay. So that's it on that. And now we're at the point of them about to go back, go go down when Yahweh Shah return. That's why now you're seeing the nation of Israel waking up. Esau, Edom being exposed of who they really are. Okay. When it comes to the biblical nationality. Okay. The, what the scripture says when it comes to the future judgment. Okay. So we're in that time now. Okay. That's it on that. Let me get on. Matter of fact, like I say, by they swore they rule. I'm going to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. And it says, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. And that's what eventually the, the Heavenly Father and the Son are going to do in this time. Okay, about to cast Esau, Edom, 
down out of power, man. And it start with his truth, exposing him by the way of the prophets. And eventually when Yahweh Shai returned, and this place are totally annihilated by missiles. But leading up to that, you're going to have plagues hitting the earth, especially this place, America, as we're in that stage now. The coming of famine, pestilence, civil war, race wars, the Third World War, okay? And ultimately, this place being destroyed. So they ain't going to fulfill the NWO as they think they is, okay? The Lord going to disappoint them. And it says... Arise, O Lord, and disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Okay, once again, Esau, Edom, blessing was the sword. Okay, and right now they over us, they rule over us, and they conquer us by their sword. Okay, but it came to the enslavement of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And still to this day, okay, the Lord has set them up to be a punishment unto us, man. Okay. And we also about to come in the time of Jacob's trouble, where it's going to, you know, according to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, where it's going to be on uh, the time of martial law, troops being deployed throughout America, okay? Military troops, concentration camps, strict legislations, and also the, the implementation of the MOTB, checkpoints, curfews, travel bans. All that part of Esau, Edom, swore it, man. The brain dest destruction, okay, and mainly to you Negro, Latino, and Native Americans, okay, which the two-thirds, because the lek is going to be delivered, okay? Continuing on, and it says, verse 14, From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hidden treasure, they are full of children and have and, and 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 leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Okay, and that's Esau Edom. Okay? Hey, you know these Edomites always having trust funds, okay, uh, or wills. And they have certain riches, okay, that you know the parent or the the great grandparents died and lead to their sons and lead to their you know they 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 their grandkids, their trust funds, you know. And because then the, this is the time of Esau Edom rulership, man. Okay, and mainly these elites. Okay, as they think they're gonna rule forever. They figure that their rich is gonna continue on forever. Okay. <clears throat> Which is um also reincarnation. Okay. Like Apostle Gabal was making mention that, you know, the um the Rothschilds, which today, at one point in time. They was known as the uh, the Bowers, okay? And, you know, um, the head Bower, I forgot his first name. Dang. Um, basically, he had five sons, okay, that he, you know, split the, you know, the certain business up, the banking business up between those five sons, okay? And he know... Because these elites, they're on a high level, man. They know about reincarnation, man. They want, they're they going to die and come back in their next lifetime, okay, to receive riches. Okay, that's why they always kept the 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 the, the cash flow, so to speak, okay, within that family, okay? Because eventually the, the, the Bowers came back as the Rothschilds, man, okay? And from that time when the Bowers opened up those banking, that banking system, Okay. And those five sons, they came back in this lifetime receiving their same inheritance. Okay. Throughout different generations, man. Okay. And according to the Bible, every third or fourth generation, you come back. Okay. So they done came back multiple times, man. Enjoying their lives, their riches. Okay. But now we're at the, the um, at their last end. Okay. So that's what these devils think. They got riches and they feel like they're going to continue on to live and leave their substance to their base. Okay, like I say, even from these elites on down to these average Edomites that's wealthy. Okay? So they have generation wealth. So that go back to the parable. But like I say, they gain everything through their riches. So that's it on that. Let me get on... 
Let me go back to the parable and I'll finish it off. Luke chapter 16, verse um, 1. go to verse. Luke chapter 16, verse 20. And it says, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which were led in his gate full of sores. And we explained that. That's Lazarus going to the Israelites. And the sores represent the curses. Okay? Verse 21. And desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from, his, from the rich man's table. Yeah, the system represent Esau, Edom, table, man. And the crumbs represent the, the low income, okay, that Jake desired, or the riches that Jake desired. When I say Jake, Negro, Latino, Native Americans, okay, Israelites, okay, to look for the system to be beneficial to them, okay? Besides the dollar, the financial aid, besides that, the the uh, health care, uh, 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 EBT, Section 8, okay, government funds, okay? As the scripture says, we, uh, we will go to the to our enemies for the want of all things. How we're going to be the borrowers, not the lenders. Okay? That's written in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay? And hey, right now, people are looking for reparations due to so-called slavery, man, or, or due to slavery, they say. Okay, what happened to the, the, the blacks? Now they're talking about reparations. So that our people desiring the crumbs from the rich man's table. And it says, and moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And the dogs represent these heathen nations, man, that come from their country. Okay, such as the, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs, the original Africans, the Hamites. Okay, the East Indians that go back to Elam. All these heathen nations that lead their they, you know, they, they, they lands, okay, they foreign lands to come over here. And somehow they get more of a better chance or upper hand than the average Negro, Latino, Native Americans. Okay, look at certain neighborhoods where Jake reside at, okay? Who own all the, the, the liquor stores, the restaurants, the convenience stores, okay? The laundry mats. Certain business within itself, the jewelry business. Okay, and Esau Edom aid them into that man, cause it's all systematic design. Okay, that these heathens come over here, set up shop, and be more well off than the average Negro Latino Native American. Okay, to the point that the average Negro Latino Native Americans, besides going to Esau Edom for help, hey, they got to go to these heathens as well. Okay, that's set up in this system. Every time you these telemarkets calling your house, okay, which a lot of them end up with scams, who's on the receiving end of that other phone? Okay, East Indians, Arabs, Chinese. So that dumb, the dogs, okay, that licking the source of, of, of Lazarus represent these heathen nations coming over here, benefiting more and more off our captivity as well, besides Esau Edom. Okay, the chief heathen nation that's in power. And you can read about that in um, Psalms, the 83rd chapter, how the nations gather together to cut us off as being the Lord's chosen people, man. Okay? So besides Esau Edom, the so-called white race, these heathen nations, okay, all of them are our, our adversaries, our enemies, man. And that's why all of them are going to go into captivity right along with Esau Edom. Because the only one that's going to be ruling in the kingdom of heaven here on the earth when Yahweh shall return is the nation of Israel. Um, and it says, and it came to pass, verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay, Abraham's bosom represent what? The kingdom. Okay. <laughs> And it says, and the rich man also died and was buried. Okay, and that's going into the time when eventually when Yahweh Shah returned and set up the kingdom. 
Okay, then ladders, okay, which represent Israel, is going to be set on top, man. Okay? And Esau, Edom kingdom is going to be taken down. Right along with these all these heathens. And it says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes and began in torment, being in torments. And it's going to hell represent a low condition. Okay? So they're going to be brought from riches to rags, man. Back to the bottom where they belong. Okay, when Yahweh Shai returned and set up the kingdom of Israel and start with these elites going in captivity. Because the elites, they're going to escape the judgment of those missiles and the, and the laser beams that come from the chariots what the world call UFOs when Yahweh Shai return and deliver the elect as well by the way of those chariots from out of the destruction of the missiles. But the elites and uh, certain heathens, okay, that's going to be reserved. They're going to... um. Say like this, be exempt, okay, from those missiles only to be reserved for captivity. Start with the elites of Esau Edom. So that's going to be their hell, okay? Hell represent a low state, okay? A, a state of difficulty on the earth or the grave or death, okay? Matter of fact, let me see what um the blue letter say about that word hell. Because a lot of our people are the Christian church or Roman Catholicists, okay, or Roman Catholics, they teach that hell is a, a mythic place, okay, where individuals who do wrong and don't believe in God and Christ, okay, they're going to die and go to hell and burn forever. Not so, man. Okay. Okay, let's go here. Let's see what it say in the blue letter. Because sometimes the blue letter go off too. Strong's G86. Hades. Hades. Thayer's lexicon. Hades. Hades. All right, let's see. And it says, um... And it says, properly unseen, Hades, or the place, state, or departed souls, grave, and hell. So they even know to a certain extent. Okay? Okay, because Hades go back to the Greek believing in the hell. Okay? But it's actually a place of the grave, death, okay? Or a low state. Let's see what this say. Um... Uh, See, so yeah, they go off. Okay, definition number three, most likely, the most likely to it. Okay, the state of hell. And it says, later use of this word, the grave, death, hell. Okay? And also hell represent a place of difficulty. Okay? A low state. And just as this is Esau, Edom, heaven. Okay, heaven represent rulership. Okay. This is the hell for the Negro, Latino, Native Americans. Okay, once again, Lazarus. Okay. But now we come into the time of the transition of power, man. That Esau, Edom about to be brought to a low state. And the nation of Israel about to be raised up in a heavenly state. When Yahweh shall return. Okay, which is I came to being on top. And they going, and then Esau, Edom going back down to the bottom. Right along with these heathens. So let me continue on. And it says, um, back into Luke chapter 16, verse 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes and being in torment and see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, because Lazarus once again represent the nation of Israel, man. Okay. And this going into eventually Esau Edom going into captivity up under us. Okay. Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patient in the faith of the saints. And that's Esau Edom. 
Okay, he led us in captivity, riding over the rest of these heathen nations. So they're going to go into captivity. They, they're going to be judged by the sword, just as they laid a sword to us. Okay, and that's true justice. Let me get this. Jeremiah chapter 30. Let me get to the point. Um, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devoured thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Okay, so Esau, Edom, and these heathens going into captivity when Yahweh shall return. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. There go no wounds again. Them sores. Okay, we represent the curses, man. Okay, remember Lazarus had the sores. Okay. So it said that I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Okay, so eventually, Yahweh Bashim al going to deliver the nation of Israel. Start with their lake. And the kingdom is going to be given unto the nation of Israel, man. And we're going to rule over these heathen nations. Okay, and we're going to be restored, man, back in our land. Okay, which, by the way, that land is going to be destroyed by missiles. Because the people that's over there are not the original people. They're Edomites as well, man. Okay, the chief seat, Amalek. Okay, the top ones that's ruling. Okay, these elites, they're Amalek. Okay. So once that land be destroyed, by the way, the missiles, Yahweh Shah is going to establish the land of Israel, okay, by the true inheritors after the Lord descend the nation of Israel, starting with the elect men back on the earth to take over. You can read about that in Revelation chapter 21, okay? New Jerusalem descending out of the, the heavens, okay? That means coming out of those chairs and, and, and taking over under the rule of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. In the land of Israel, which these elites and these heathen nations are going to build up our kingdom through, through servitude, man. In the lamest term, slavery. Okay? And the two-thirds of our people that die on this side or in this lifetime, they're going to come back in the kingdom. Okay? Being the children or the offspring of the elect. So that's it on that. Let me see y'all. Um, So they're going to go into captivity. These, these, uh, matter of fact, let me get this. These elites. But that songs. Um, Psalms chapter 149, verse 6. Let thy high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth and the two edged sword in their hands. And this is going into the time when the nation of Israel, the elect men, okay, received that power. Okay, eventually, you know, the, to the fullest, okay, when the, the, the kingdom is established under the rule of uh, Yahweh Bashim was shot, okay, and the two-edged two sword in their hand. But you remember, okay, Revelation 13 and 10, those that leave into captivity shall go into captivity. Those that kill it by the sword must be killed by the sword, okay? So that's that righteous judgment, recompense. Verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bend their kings with chains and the nobles with fetter of irons. Okay, once again, they're going to go into captivity, starting with the elites. To execute upon them the judgment written, and it's already written. So now we're at the time of it being fulfilled. Okay? This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Okay? So let me get back to uh, Luke, Luke chapter 16, and I'll get ready to close, finish the uh, lesson out. Luke chapter 16, verse um, 23. And it says, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, just going back into the rich man. Okay, the hell represents a low condition, low state that they're going to be brought to. Okay, Esau, Edom. 
And it says, being in torments, and see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, once again, our kingdom being established, and they're going into captivity. Not just going into captivity, but going into captivity for a thousand year reign. A thousand year period, man. Okay, and after that thousand year, Obadiah 1 and 18. Continue on. And it says, and he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Okay, and at that time, they're going to want mercy, man. Okay? When the Lord put the judgment upon us, put upon them by using us. Okay? Then they're going to want a reason. Okay? But it's going to be too late. Matter of fact, let me get this. It said, with well, him that have no mercy, that show no, no mercy. I know that in James. Have. Okay, here we go. James chapter 2, verse 13. And it says, For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has shown no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. And that's Esau, you know. He ain't going to receive no mercy, man. Okay, you how about Shemal Shah going to bring the judgment upon him? Okay. No meaning how, how, how much they wept. Okay, because they ain't show us no mercy. The Lord said they kept a perpetual hatred towards us, man. Okay, a continual hatred. And that still stands to this day. Luke chapter 16, verse um, 24. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame, okay, so that's going into the, the hell they're going to be catching in the kingdom, man, okay, and the judgment starting to come upon them now, okay, but it's going to be fulfilled in the kingdom, okay, especially these elites, and it says, verse 25, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, that's the time that we in now. Esau even Esau Edom had received his good things, the riches, the wealth of the earth, and his rulership. Okay, but now us, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, receiving evil things. Okay, once again the curses, the Lord punishing us, man. Okay, but now we come into the time of transition of power. Okay, Second Edges chapter six, starting at verse six, all the way through nine, going into Esau Edom is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning that follow. Okay, we're in the be beginning stage of the transition of power, man. And continuing on. And it says, but, but now he is comfort and thou art tormented. And that's the kingdom. Okay, and the Lord raising up the elect now. Okay, but much more in the kingdom. Okay, as a whole, the nation of Israel ruling over Esau, Edom, and these heathen nations throughout the process of time. But starting with the elect. Okay, the kingdom is going to be our comfort. And Esau, Edom, our kingdom to him is going to be a torment, slavery for him, and these heathen nations, but mainly Esau, Edom. Verse 26, and besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that's meaning a great separation. Okay, so no matter how much you Christians, or much you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans that cry out about Esau, Edom can be saved, and these heathen nations can be granted in, that's false, man. Okay, start with the, the Edomites and these heathen nations. we always been separated, okay, the nation of Israel. Okay? And it's going to be proven also in the kingdom. And Esau, Edom know that. These elites, okay, and certainly of these heathens, they know that. That the Lord chose us to be over them. 
But in their pride and through them being in rulership, they think they'll never be taken down. Okay, they think they're going to rule forever. Okay, so it always been a, a great gulf. Okay, gap. Separation. Spiritually. Okay. On all levels, in all actuality, Yahweh Shem Al Shah chosen the nation of Israel, us, over all nations, man, including Esau and Edom. And it says, so that they which were would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from this. So that's that separation. Okay. And it says, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house. Okay. Because you got to remember what well, you, you, cause you hear, you might hear somebody say that, well, Esau, if he, he's the, is Esau the rich man, why he called Abraham father? Okay. Cause, cause Esau came from the bloodline of Abraham. Okay. It was Abraham, Isaac. Okay. Esau and Jacob. Okay, but out of that bloodline, who the Lord favored? Jacob. Okay? And put side Esau, man. Okay? So the chosen line came out of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? The Israelites, uh, ultimately. And it says, Then say he, verse 27, Then say he, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into thy place in torment. So this meaning that Esau, especially at this time, looking for forgiveness. That's why you see him uh, mainly these Edomites trying to sneak their way into salvation and these heathens. And you got two thirds of non-believers of our people, okay, trying to help forward that, man. Okay. <clears throat> And it says, Abraham said unto to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Okay, and the prophets come from who? The, the nation of Israel. As you see now, the day the Lord raising up the prophets of Israel to go out there and condemn this place and telling the Esau, Edom, and these heathens their future judgment. They're going to go into captivity. Okay? And ain't no change in that. Okay? And it says, and he said, and it says, nigh, nigh, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And ain't no repentance for Esau Edom. Okay? Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Hebrews 12 and 16. Hebrews 12 and 16. And it says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, there you they go again. Okay, I made mention earlier how Esau sold his birthright to Jacob, okay, for that red pottage, okay, for that red meat. Show you that's a characteristic of these so-called white people today, because that's what they like to eat their, their meat rare, okay, which going back to the law, you're supposed to cook your meat fully done. With no blood in it. Okay? But the only nation, the top nation mainly, Esau Edom is known to have their food uncooked and eat raw meat. Okay? Because they go back to their characteristic of their forefather Esau. But let me continue on. And it says, Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance though he saw it carefully with tears. So ain't no repentance for Esau either. And this is the New Testament, by the way. Okay, Paul. Okay, that wrote this. So ain't no, ain't no um, repentance for Esau either. All these other nations. Okay, only ones that can repent is the nation of Israel. And that's starting with the elect. That's going to repent and come back and acknowledge Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai unto salvation. Okay, at this time, two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. But these heathen nations done with Esau, Edom, they don't have no repentance. Who the world called Christ didn't came and die and risen for them. He only came for the nation of Israel. And you can read that in um, Acts, the fifth chapter, verse 30. Okay, but let me finish this. 
Let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead because it's about to be an hour. Matter of fact, since I'll go to an hour, let me get that real quick since I recorded it. Uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 30. And it says, The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, who you slew and hang on a tree. Okay, going into the crucifixion of the cross. Him have Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. And Yahweh Shai name in the Hebrew means he is the deliverer or he is the savior. Okay? And it says, with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So it said to Israel, no other nation. And we just read in Hebrews 12 and 16, there's no repentance for Esau, Edom. Okay. And Esau is Edom. So, cause you not, you might have Christians talking about, well, it wasn't no repentance for Esau, they forefather, but the Edomites can be, can be um, forgiven. No, Esau is Edom, the whole bloodline. Okay. Have no repentance. Right along with the rest of these heathen nations. Because the scripture says the Lord came and gave repentance unto Israel. And the law of statute commandment was given unto Israel anyway. Psalms 147 tell you about that. Or Psalms 140, uh, matter of fact, let me get it before I close out. Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for this judge, for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh Bashim Shai. So the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. Okay. And it says, as he have not dealt so with any nation, meaning any other nation, he's not dealing with them, especially Esau Edom. Okay, once again, Hebrews 12 and 16 proves that. And other scriptures as well. And we read early in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, 16 and 17, how all our adversaries are going to go into captivity. Every one of them. And I'll finish y'all Luke 16. And it says, Luke chapter 16, verse um, 29. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Okay, and the prophets are back here today. And we're telling the future judgment of Esau Edom. And he said, Nigh, father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Okay, so ain't no Edomites can um, stand up and be a spokesman, okay, for, for the Most High about repentance man okay giving them the reason why they should be saved okay they ain't gonna happen if vocab alone can't do that okay or any other edomite okay and it says verse 31 and he said unto him if they have not moses if they hear not moses and the prophets neither will they be pursued i mean neither so like it. and if he if he and he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one raised from the dead. So ain't no chance. Okay? Because the Lord is dealing with the prophets. Okay? The prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh the prophets of Israel, that speak the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And part of the word, the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is the judgment of Esau, Edom, going to captivity. Okay? As his kingdom gonna be destroyed, man, and these heathen nations as well. But primary number one, Esau, Edom, man. So it doesn't matter how much Edomites gather together and cry out, ask for forgiveness. The Lord changes not. The Heavenly Father changes not. It is already set in stone, already written in scriptures. Now we at the point of it being fulfilled, man. Okay. For all you people that think Esau, Edom can be saved. All, 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 all other nations can't be saved. Israel only. And it's starting with the elect at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson here. And I pray that the lesson be edifying. I'm going to end off by giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Chodash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone. 
that teach and rule well today. And salutation also to the fellow laborers that's in the ministry, the company of prophets, and also the believers that's scattered worldwide, that's in the faith and exalt in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Chodash, and all truth and sincerity, day in the doubt. Until the next time, Lord willing, Shalom to the elect.